A panel of U.S. experts talked about some of those threats during a press conference on Tuesday. They said the goal of this year's nuclear summit was to gather countries with different perspectives. They also addressed the efforts China has made in nuclear security. Chinese President Xi Jinping and U.S. President Barack Obama plan to meet on the sidelines of the summit. For you will see this is not a like-minded group. Um, and it was explicitly intended to be diverse uh, on the theory that if we, that diverse set of countries, can find consensus, that's especially powerful. We're really uh, quite encouraged by the leadership that China is beginning to show in the nuclear security realm, not only in managing its own material, but in creating a platform for cooperation regionally and internationally through the center of excellence uh, that it's been carrying out. And this is just one, one milestone in a history of U.S.-Chinese uh, nuclear cooperation. For more on the nuclear security landscape as this summit gets underway, I spoke with Samantha pitts Kiefer at the Nuclear Threat Initiative. She's director of the Global Nuclear Policy Program. Right now, there's no international set of standards that all countries follow. When you look at the results of some of our studies, you'll see that countries take very different approaches sometimes. Um, it, it varies, and the, the level of security practice may be quite uneven. There was an article recently in the Washington Post about Belgium and the, this threat of operatives working within nuclear facilities, and yet I don't think people think about cyber. You can be somewhere else and still do great damage. Talk to me about that as a threat, and, and how is that increased in terms of, uh, you know, top of mind consideration as we move forward? It's really only been in the last few years that people have really thought about the consequences of a cyber attack on a nuclear facility that could perhaps shut down critical security systems, allowing someone to enter a facility and steal material, perhaps um, uh, do something to disrupt the cooling systems or the, the safety systems. Uh, potentially resulting in something like a Fukushima-type radioactive release. So this is really something more and more countries are starting to think about. In our assessments, we found that countries are really not doing enough to meet this threat in terms of what are the laws and regulations. We found 20 out of 47 countries had none at all. Some areas you might see transporting of materials where there's security in place, steps, procedures, perhaps not as strong in other areas. We actually look at, at how many countries of the 24 countries with weapons usable materials, how many of those transport their materials internationally or domestically, and it's 18 of 24. So you have 18 countries moving material around um, from different facilities in the country, between countries, that's fuel, there's waste, um, materials themselves. That's a lot of opportunity for people to steal attack those convoys and steal material. I think that there's a little factoid that every case so far of a known, uh, a known case of material being stolen or smuggled out of facility has been um, due to the participation of an insider, somebody inside a facility who has access, uh, is authorized to be there, but has in some way become radicalized or perhaps it's even just corrupt payment. Um, uh, someone who is assisted from the inside. So it's extremely important that uh, facilities, the companies that run these facilities, that countries have these requirements to ensure that there's personnel vetting, um, that the vetting occurs not only at the time of hire, but on a regular basis. Uh, at the end of this week, going into next week, uh, what puts a bounce in your step? What, what would you like to see as a su successful outcome? What I'd like to see, and I think we'll see a little bit of it, but I'm not sure how much, is a recognition by the, the 52 countries that gather here that although the summit process as we know it is ending, that the job is not yet done, that the process of cooperation and strengthening the global system has to continue beyond this week. Next Monday, after the summit's over, terrorists are gonna be out there still seeking weapons of mass destruction. We all have to be as engaged and concerned about this as we are today, even with the summit ending. So I'll be looking for an agreement, a solid, robust agreement by countries to say, we have a path, a mechanism to, to move forward, a process that we're going to continue cooperating, continue working to address gaps in the system going forward in a serious way.